where we're going to be doing uh, something a little bit different throughout this year uh, with our memory verse. As you know, our memory verse uh, for uh, this month is Ephesians 1, 3. Everybody have it memorized already? You got it down? How many times have you seen it? <laughs> just, uh, just for a few minutes, uh, we had it at the beginning of the month. Uh, some of you might have received a yellow card uh, that has the verse on it, and we pray that you be able to use that to memorize it. But uh, I don't know, how do you memorize Scripture? Do you have a method by which you use to uh, memorize the verses? I know when I was in the Ministry of Child Evangelism Fellowship, we would sometimes encourage the children us, how do you memorize scripture? How do you memorize verses of the scripture? And we used the several suggestions and, and uh, thoughts about how they can do that. I know one of the ways I like to memorize scripture is uh, by uh, going phrase by phrase. If uh, you take the verse that we have for this month, uh, you could break that down into several different sections and uh, start memorizing it like, the first phrase would be, blessed be the God and Father. If you get that down, then you could go on to the next uh, part of the verse. Blessed be the God and Father of what? Of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there's two phrases that uh, you can put together. And uh, once you have that down, uh, where it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and then you can go to the next part, who has blessed us? And, uh, and then it goes on and expands on that in the next phrase, with every spiritual blessing. Wow, we're going to talk about this verse as we go th through the message this morning, but then it goes on and says, in the heavenly places, in Christ. So if you break it down in those phrase by phrase uh, or section by section, and then once you get the, and uh, then by the time you get done, you keep repeating it and repeating it until you have it down. And uh, another way you could help by taking and just writing the verse down over and over again. And, uh, and once you do have it memorized, even if you use a phrase by phrase, you can always go back and, uh, and then see if you can write it down without looking at it again. So that will continue to help remind you of this. And uh, then there's some other ways that I've, uh, we've taught about, and uh, some of them is by putting the first letter of each of the words. Have any of you ever used that method? Put, put the letter of first, like B, B, the, or T, G, A, F, and you put that down on a paper, and then see if you can say the verse by just looking at the first letter of each word until you have it down and uh, then another way you could do, if you have a writing board or something like that, where you could write the verse out and then start memorizing it. And then as you're memorizing it, erase a couple of the words in it uh, and, uh, and then see if you can say it without those words in it. And uh, so there's some various ways that you can do it. Another good thing is try to get a, somebody that you can be accountable to, uh, if, you know, have somebody that you can say the verse to on a weekly basis. Um, or if you don't have anybody, just grab somebody from the church, you know, on Sunday morning or whenever you see them. Hey, you know, our verse for this month at our church is this. And then say it to them. And if you stumble over it, don't worry about that, you know. Uh, just, uh, just keep working on it then. Get back. And because uh, when you're repeating it, you see it, you repeat it, over and over again, that's how you get it instilled into your hearts and your minds uh, as to what it's all about. And then you can use it at other times. You know, it's, if you use it, you don't lose it, right? <laughs> and uh, so, so I trust that you will enjoy memorizing the Word of God. And, and also what we're doing this year is we're taking a passage of Scripture from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. And uh, we're going to memorize a verse a month. There's 12 verses there. And we're going to work on those so that by the time we're done at the end of this year, all of us will be able to say 
Ephesians 1, 3 through 14, right? <laughs> right? Are you going to be with me? All right. All right. I, I trust you will. I trust you will work on them. I trust you will memorize those verses uh, from uh, month to month. And also one of the things that we're doing is that I'm going to be preaching uh, each month uh, on each of the verses that we're going to be memorizing. So you'll memorize it. You will hear the meaning and thoughts of it because sometimes if we understand the meaning of it, it's easier as well for us to remember it in our lives. And so I trust as I uh, go through each of these verses with you throughout this year that it will have a great impact on your life because one of the things that we're looking at uh, in Ephesians 1, verses 3 through 14 is that, you know, God has given us a lot of uh, wealth, as I call it, and outline it in the book, to what we have in Jesus Christ. And as you read down through these verses, it's kind of interesting how many times Paul uses that little phrase, in Christ. It's very important for us to understand because these riches are spiritual things that we're going to be talking about. And we'll see this as we get into the first verse here, uh, verse 3, where it talks about the blessings. Blessed is he who, what? Has blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing. So we're going to be talking about uh, blessed with every spiritual blessing. And what are those? You know, Jesus, uh, when he was talking uh, to the people, uh, one of the uh, parables that he taught, because as he was talking to the people in Luke chapter 11, or in chapter 12, it says that one of the people from the, the group just haul, called out and says uh, for him to help that his brother would distribute the inheritance that he got from his father to him as well. And uh, then, of course, uh, Jesus kind of used that as a spinoff into the, the parable that he was talking about, about not being greedy. And uh, he told about a rich man, as it starts in verse 16 of Luke chapter 12, and he told the, them a parable saying, the land of a certain rich man uh, was very productive. And he began te reasoning to himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no place to store my crop? And he said, This is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and I'll build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you are, have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. And then Jesus gives a little application to all of this of what was going on here. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your soul is required of you, and now who will own what you have prepared? Look at the application to this man. So is the man who lays up treasure for himself. But what's the last part of that verse say? And is not rich toward God. And so when we are thinking about this passage that we're going to be looking at in the, the memorizing of, of these verses, one of the things we're going to find is that these are talking about the riches that we have in Christ and if we have these riches in Christ, it's far greater than any riches that we can accumulate here upon this earth. And uh, so uh, Jesus also, when he was giving the Sermon on the Mount and in Matthew chapter 6, he talked about lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, you know, and not on this earth. Uh, because where your heart is there, where you're... Where you're interest and your thoughts will be is in those things and not and if we're accumulating wealth and not accumulating the riches that we have in Christ and 
and drawing upon those on a daily basis, and then we're missing the, the purpose for us as being believers in Christ. And so that's what we're going to be getting at and, and going into as we get into uh, this, these verses throughout this uh, year. And uh, one of the things I think we need to do as we get into Ephesians chapter 1 and uh, verse 3, we need to lay the foundation of the book of Ephesians. As you know, it starts out in verse 1 of Ephesians 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus. We know it says Paul, the apostle uh, of Jesus Christ by the will of God. If you remember the first uh, introduction of Paul uh, to us in the Bible was actually in the end of chapter 7 of the book of Acts, but it was not in a good situation because there he was watching the religious leaders stone Stephen, one of the disciples of Jesus Christ, to death. And uh, then you go into chapter 8 of the book of Acts, and it tells us that from that day on, Saul, who was a Pharisee, he was just coming up in the Pharisee ranks and so forth, he gave... A, all of his zeal for God to try to eliminate these believers of the way. That's what it's mentioned uh, several times in the book of Acts when it talks about believers in Christ. And I'm, probably the, the connection with it is where Jesus told his disciples the night that he was betrayed and then was beaten and died on the cross the next morning and, and things that that. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but what? By me. And uh, so as they were sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, people uh, that were believing were kind of connected. Well, they are part of the way, the way to heaven, as they are saying in their gospel message as they would preach that Jesus is the only way to heaven. If you want to go there, if you want your sins forgiven, you need to believe in him. And so Paul, however, was against them and he was uh, doing persecution against the believers, especially there in Jerusalem, having them arrested, having them thrown into prison. And, uh, and uh, he was very zealous about that because they th he thought he was doing God's will at that time. But actually, as we know, it tells us in uh, Acts chapter 9 what happened to Saul as he was called at that time before he was saved. His name was Saul, and then it was changed to, as we know him, as Paul. But it says that he had a letter from the religious leaders to go to Damascus and to arrest and, and uh, those who were of the way. And of course, we know as he was going on that journey from Jerusalem to Damascus, what happened to him? Jesus Christ appeared through him, a light from heaven shone and blinded him. He fell on his knees and, and uh, he was spoken to by Jesus Christ himself. And we know what happened from that as he went into Damascus, Ananias was sent by God to him to tell him about who Jesus or what Jesus had in store for him and how God was calling him now to be a missionary, uh, an apostle to the Gentile people. And we know from that then uh, Paul gave his life over to Christ and he continued to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, as we come to uh, this writing of the book of Ephesians, uh, we know that Saul, who now is Paul, as we know him, was out spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Gentile people. And uh, we already, if you remember the messages, I was going through the book of Acts and showing how the gospel uh, was spreading through the missionary journeys of, of Paul. And his connection with Ephesus uh, came when, at the end of 
his second missionary journey after Paul had gone up and established churches in Turkey there in, in uh, Lystra and Derby and Antioch of that area. Uh, he was called by God to go up into Macedonia where he went up to Philippi and Thessalonica and those uh, establishing churches there. And, uh, and so he did that on his second missionary journey. And as he was going back to Antioch from the church that sent him to the, on that second missionary journey as well as the first and also going to be on the third, uh, it tells us that he stopped at Ephesus, but he only stopped there for like one Sabbath day on a Saturday when he went into the synagogue and taught the people there about the Lord Jesus Christ as he was accustomed to doing, going into the synagogues. Every city he would go into, he would go into the synagogues of the Jews and he would teach them that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, the one who had been promised in the Old Testament. And as he was there in Ephesus and was there for that one Sunday uh, or Saturday, I should say, uh, he told them that, you know, he, they wanted him to stay after he had taught them to tell them more. But he says, I, no, I'm not going to do that at this time, but I will come back. And so he continued on his way to Antioch. And then as he started his third missionary journey, uh, it tells us that he went up into uh, Lystra and Derby and that, and then he went over to Ephesus. And it tells us, and you can read this in, in Acts chapter 19, uh, where he spent two years uh, ministering there at the, at the church there in Ephesus that he established uh, through reaching the Jews and then reaching the Gentiles in that area. So, so his first one was at the end of his second missionary journey. The, the second time was when he uh, went back to Ephesus on his second or third missionary journey and spent two years ministering to the people there. And then it tells us the third contact that he had with the church at Ephesus was not through going to Ephesus, but as he was coming to the end of his third missionary journey, he believed that God wanted him to go up to Jerusalem instead of returning to Antioch. And he wanted to be up there by the day of Pentecost, a feast that the Jews celebrated, and he wanted to be in Jerusalem for that. And it tells us that what he did, he sent a word to the elders at the church at Ephesus and told them, meet me at Miletus. Miletus? I'm not for sure how to pronounce that. But anyways, it was a city just south of, of uh, Ephesus, and so the elders of the church that he had appointed and things as was his custom when he would establish a church, he would appoint elders, those that would be uh, more mature and able to, to help the people in their development of their belief and faith in Jesus Christ. And, uh, and so he called them to come down and they came down and met with him. And, uh, and of course they were saddened because Paul kind of indicated that this was going to be his last time probably uh, be, uh, before he goes up to Jerusalem and, uh, and he believes as he was being told as he was leaving the churches and making his way toward Jerusalem that uh, uh, when he got to Jerusalem, he would be arrested. And we know that as you come into the end of the, the book of Acts, uh, after he got to Jerusalem, we find that he was arrested uh, through his appeal to uh, Caesar. Uh, he was then uh, sent on from there to Rome. And so about 1960, or 1960, yeah, that, that's when I graduated from high school. I, but I don't know why that popped in. But anyways, by, uh, uh, it, it tells us that he uh, was then uh, sent there, he got to there about 60 AD, and, uh, and uh, we know that he was in prison, kind of a, uh, sometimes uh, it's believed that he was in kind of a house arrest where he had the soldiers guarding him, but he was uh, able to have people come and meet with him and, and leave and, and so forth along that line. And so as he was there in Rome, in prison, arrested, uh, under a uh, guard and everything, it tells us that he wrote the book of Ephesians. And along with the book of Ephesians, he also wrote 
uh, three other books that are uh, usually connected with the book of Ephesians, and that was to Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. And uh, many times these four uh, letters or epistles, as sometimes they're called, uh, of Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon uh, were called prison uh, epistles. So if you ever see that, what are the prison epistles? You got four of them, right? <laughs> uh, that it's mentioned here. Uh, so uh, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. So that gives us a little bit of a background of, of the one who wrote this letter, who sent this to uh, the people, and who did he send it to? Uh, it tells us there in verse 1, to the saints uh, who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus. That word saint so that's used there in that verse is used nine times throughout the epistle of, of Ephesians. And uh, who are the saints? One of the things we have to be very careful of, don't take the definition that you might find in the, the uh, dictionaries that, that say a saint is one who has been given that status in their lives. And usually it's because a certain religious group has, has examined their life and, and how they lived it and so forth, and uh, then they will uh, give sainthood to, to that individual. Because, and what is it based on? Well, it's based on how they lived and how, what they did in their life and, and so forth. And if they measure up to the, the, the qualifications that the, the, that group believed it did, they did, then they would be anointed as saints. Well, believers in Christ, guess what? You don't have to be examined by the church. You don't have to be examined by us to be called a saint. Because each one of us who have Jesus Christ as our personal Savior are a saint. And what does the word saint mean? It means one set apart for God's use. And uh, so it's not dependent upon what man says, it's dependent upon what God says. And so God says that if you have believed and received Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you, through your faith and trust in Him, you are therefore set aside as a saint. And so that's why Paul feels very comfortable as he's writing to these believers in Ephesus, uh, calling them saints, ones who are set apart for God's use. And as we are set aside for God's use, then we're going to find as we memorize and go through these verses in verses 3 through 14, we're going to learn what we have in Christ. These riches that God has given us, not on the basis of ourselves, but upon what he wants to bless us with in our spiritual relationship to him. And we're going to see how that all comes together as we go through verse 3 of this passage. But before we get into that, let's just pray and commit this time to the Lord. Father, again, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how you had it written through these men of God and, and uh, through the direction of the Holy Spirit working in their lives to help them to be able to put them together and uh, to give these teachings and instructions and and relationships that we have with you uh, in writing so that we can uh, have them readily available for us to know and to learn from, and most of all, to apply to our lives. And we just pray now as we look at verse 3 of Ephesians and how it is written and, and what you have blessed us with, that you will just encourage us in our relationship with you and our walk with you. And we'll just thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. As we think about an outline for the book of Ephesians, I put one in your bulletin, uh, in the bulletin there for you. Uh, just breaking it down, chapters 1 through 3 talks about the wealth that we have in Christ. And then uh, in uh, chapters 4 through 6, uh, uh, verse 9, it talks about the walk. And then uh, chapter 6, verses 10 through 24, about the warfare that we are in as Christians. I think that's one of the good uh, breakdowns of it. That's not original with me uh, uh, in, in uh, this outline. I remember back when I was in college, 
and uh, I was going through a class on the book of Ephesians, and I had to write a paper about the book of Ephesians, and, and I came across uh, a, a lady who had written about uh, this book, or about the book of Ephesians, and, and she had written this book called The Wealth, The Walk, and The Warfare of Christians. And, uh, and I just thought it just fit so well with the book of Ephesians that I've uh, always used it as an understanding of how do you break down the book of Ephesians. And I think those three hit those sections very well. And so in chapters one through three, we are talking about the wealth of Jesus Christ. So as we think of just verses three through 14, we're not covering everything in these verses of what God has provided for us. Have you ever seen or heard or read stories about someone who, who lived a life like a pauper? And, uh, and when they died, people found out that they were very rich. They had all kinds of money and stuff. Uh, and uh, what do you think? You know, here they had all this wealth available to them, but what happened? They didn't use it to benefit them in their lives and the needs that they had some on occasions. And so what was the use of having the, the, the uh, spiritual or the material wealth if they didn't use it for the needs that they had? Well, it's kind of the same way with us uh, in relationship to spiritual things. Because you notice, what, what does this verse say? Blessed is be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing. We'll get into that a little bit more in, in detail. But, you know, these things that are going to be related to us in verses 3 through 14 tells us about the riches that we have in Jesus Christ. And because of this relationship that God wanted to have with us is so important for us to understand because if we understand them, in that relationship that we have with God, how he has blessed us with that relationship, then it's going to affect the way we live our lives. And that's why it's good that Paul put the wealth that we have in Christ at the beginning, and then, then he goes in, now, what is your walk? What is your warfare? How can you go through your life then for, in service for Jesus Christ? Because all these things that are here, remember what I said? You find that phrase in who? Christ. Not in man, not in the world, not in other religions, only through Christ. And he alone is the only one that has, is, enables us to have these riches. And if we have these riches, why aren't we drawing upon them on a daily basis to our lives out? And so we're going to see what that's kind of fleshes out, as we might say, uh, into our lives as we go through this year. And so this first one, uh, verse 3, says, and let's look at it again. I don't know if they can bring it all up to me on the screen or not. But uh, blessed, he's got the first part of there. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has what? Blessed us in every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And so now we want to just break those down. You notice the word and the thought of bless is used three times in the, this verse. And each one of them are indicating uh, a different thought in them. The first one, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, as I want to give the outline, and I gave, put that in your bulletin as well, there's three thoughts. The source of our blessing, the scope of our blessing, and then we want to talk about the sphere of our blessing. Now, I have to admit to you, this is not an, an original outline. I don't know if it was uh, Dr. Warren Wearsby who I took this outline from or somebody else that I heard in a Bible conference uh, say one time, he, he says, I milk a lot of cows 
but I make my own cheese or butter or something along that line, <laughs> you know. Uh, and, uh, and when you see something, I don't know if you read other commentaries and things about the Word of God and what's it saying and what does it mean. And, and sometimes you come across something that just, just sticks with you. And, and you say, how can I say it any better? And uh, that's kind of the way I did with this outline that I put down for these three thoughts uh, out of this verse. Is I, I'm using uh, Dr. Warren Wiersbe's uh, uh, outline for and thoughts here on these three th things about the source of the blessing. How do you respond when somebody does something for you? Whether it's something big or something small, you know, if we did the right thing, no matter how big it was, no matter how large it was, no matter how significant it might have seemed or insignificant, how should we respond? You know, we need to, to get back to that place uh, to say thank you. Do you do that a lot? You know, I, I think we're getting away from that thing of being thankful for what others do for us. Uh, and... Uh, and that's kind of sad. And we need to also keep that in mind when we think about our relationship with Jesus Christ. And here it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, and it stops right there for a second here, because what do we think of when we think of all that we have in Jesus Christ? Where did they come from? Did it, was it us? You remember the rich man? He had all this productive harvest of his grains and stuff. And what did he say? I'm going to tear down my barns. I'm going to build bigger ones. And then I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry. But what was the thing that was missing out of his life? He forgot God. He didn't have any room or place for God in his life. There's nothing wrong with being rich. Don't get me wrong. Because I've been rich all my life. They called me Richard when I was born. So, you know, well, anyways. <laughs> but uh, anyways, you know, we need to understand that we not only need to be uh, have material things, but we also need to make sure that we don't lose focus on the most important blessing that we can have in our lives, and that's the blessings of God upon our life, and then be thankful to Him for giving them to us and not saying, oh, look what I have achieved in my life. I've done this and I've done that. You know, that's what the Pharisee did when he went up to the temple to pray. What did he do? He says, oh, I'm glad I'm not like this publican over here. Not Republican, uh, this publican. You know, uh, you know, I I've, I've do fast, I tithe all my money and I do all this kind of stuff. But what happened? It says that he prayed to himself. You can be in church and you can pray and you can say, well, I talk to God every day, but if you don't have Jesus Christ as your Savior, it doesn't do you any good because it's only in Christ that we are blessed with these spiritual blessings that he has given to us. And so uh, we need to keep that in mind. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a number of verses that I put down in relationship over in James chapter 1, verse 17. It says, Every good thing bestowed and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. What does it say? Every good thing bestowed and every perfect gift is from above. And then, then of course, if you uh, turn back to Romans uh, chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And verse 28. It says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. You notice it says, know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God. And, uh, and then 
in Ephesians chapter 3, it tells us uh, in verse 8, to me, the very least of all saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ. Another thoughts for that unfathomable is, is unchangeable, uh, unsearchable, that kind of an idea that how can you really understand all the riches that God has given us in Christ Jesus. Now, remember, who's, who's writing the book of Ephesians? Who is God using? Paul. Was everything going, as we sometimes, have you ever heard the phrase hunky-dory? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know why, what it means, but it sounds, I know a lot of people use it. And most of the time it's used in the sense that, that when everything's going great, ah, praise the Lord. But what happens when things aren't going great in our lives? Where was Paul when he was writing this book to the believers at Ephesus? He was in prison in Rome. And here there was an, on another occasion on his second missionary journey when he went up into Philippi and was preaching the gospel in Philippi and people were believing. And what happened to him then? He cast out a demon out of a girl's uh, life. Uh, and because of that, he was beaten uh, him and Silas, and thrown into prison. And what were they doing at midnight? <laughs> why are, God, why are you doing this to us? Why is all this thing happening to me? You know, why don't, you know, no, that wasn't what he was doing. He was praying, talking to God, and maybe saying, God, I don't know why you put me in this situation, but whatever it is, I'm praising you for it. I'm thanking you for it. I know you're going to continue to be able to use me. And they were singing praise to God. You know, our situations doesn't demand our being thankful to God for who he is and what he does for us in our lives and what he's given us in Jesus Christ. And we need to keep that in mind in our lives because remember, these are talking about spiritual blessings that he has given to each one of us. And when we face these different situations and things. We can understand that, you know, this is according to his will. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, give thanks in everything for this is the what? Will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Oh, this is your will for me? Oh, God, give me a different will. You know, Jesus, if, what did he do when he was facing arrest that evening? He said, if there's any way by which this cup can pass from me, let it be, but what? Not my will, but thy will be done. If God allows that to happen in your life, and I know I've gone through some situations in my life that I was really concerned, that, God, why are you putting me through this? Why is this happening to me? And yet I needed to understand the importance. Thank you, Lord. The most important thing is my relationship with you and what you have given to me in Christ. And that's what it's all about here. That's what he's saying. Paul understood these different riches that we have in Christ, and he wanted to make sure that these believers at Ephesus understood them so that no matter what they were facing, as he told them when the ravaging wolves come into your church to try to tear your church apart, that you will be able to stand for me. And, and that's what he's getting at. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has. So the uh, source of our blessing is God, giving thanks and praise to him. The second one is the scope of our blessing, which says, who has what? Blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. He has blessed us. Just having a relationship with God, just having someone who you know cares about what's going on in your life, someone who you know that cares what's happening, and he's there for you. That's what Jesus Christ is. He's there for us. He's with us wherever we're at. He understands the situations and the circumstances that we're facing here upon this earth, and he has then blessed us 
with all spiritual blessings. It's not according to what we're experiencing in this life, although we know we, you go through various things, the moaning and groanings. We know that there's things that's going on in this world that are terrible. Uh, and of course, we know the reason for that is because of the sin of mankind. Why do we have wars going on? Why do we have uh, different people being killed through, uh, as they call it in the media, mass shootings and stuff along that line? Why do those things happen? Why does there sickness? Why does people die? We know that it's all because of sin in our world, and we live in a sinful world. But we can overcome those situations and those difficulties, not in and out of ourselves, but with our relationship that we have with God knowing that he understands all of this. He knows it's the sinfulness of mankind, and he's given a way by which these people can repent and turn away from those sins if they would just trust him. And we who have Jesus Christ as our Savior are blessed because we have that relationship with God. And of course, in his word, he's given us everything that we need. Uh, Second Peter uh, ch chapter 1, verses 3 through 11, talk about all the things that he's given us in Christ Jesus. And these are some of the other uh, blessings that we have. And we're not going to get into them, but, uh, you know, you, in verse 3, it says, Seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. The, you notice it says, through the true knowledge of, and that's the knowledge of God, of Jesus Christ, of his word, of what he's provided for us in it. And it says, for by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises in order that we, by them you might become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. <laughs> you know, all the things that are going on around us and, and the reason why these Bad things are happening, and, and the, the sad thing is that it even affects people who are believers in Christ. Uh, those things do happen, and uh, people who have Christ as a Savior die in situations like those, and uh, we need to understand that God is there with them and with us wherever we are. And I could go on and read, but I don't have the time at this time. But remember, we're talking about what? Spiritual riches in Christ, not material riches. Those things are the least of importance to us in our lives, although they are important in some, uh, to get with the, meet the needs that we have. But, but yet the most important thing, if we're not rich in Christ, then we're not rich at all. If we don't have Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are not rich spiritually. And here it tells us that in Christ, we are blessed with every spiritual blessing. And then the sphere of that blessing. You notice it says, has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in what? The heavenly places in Christ. You can say our riches in Christ are out of this world. <laughs> right? You don't think that? Well, believe it, it is. Uh, because not only do we have the riches to live for Christ right now here upon this earth, but those riches are really going to be that we're going to be with Christ for all eternity. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. That's what Christ has done. He says, I have prepared. You know, we are, we are called... What? Citizens of heaven. Uh, and uh, it tells us that uh, we are therefore, in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, ambassadors of God. We're no longer aliens of the kingdom of God. We are part of the kingdom of God now and will one day be in the kingdom of God as Christ comes to this earth to rule and to reign and then 
usher us into the new heaven, the new earth, the new Jerusalem that's going to come after his thousand year reign here upon this earth. Those are the things that we need to keep in mind. Those are already ours in Christ. And because we have those things and we look forward to that time, then we are going to be with him. Yet we can draw upon that power of the Holy Spirit that he's given to us to live the life for him. And so when we think about our lives as believers in Christ, don't be saddened that maybe you don't have the wealth and the material things that other people have in the world. Don't be upset because of things that go wrong in your life and, and sad things that happen, no matter what it might be, whether it's sickness, whether it's death, whether it's whatever it might be. Understand that if you have Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can go through each and every situation you face upon this earth. If you think about Paul and all the things that he goes to the end of 2 Corinthians and he makes a list of all the things that he went through in his life to reach people for Jesus Christ. You know, earthquakes, uh, beatings, uh, shipwrecks, all these things, he went through them, but it never deterred him from the blessings that he had in Christ and knowing as he went and shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with others, they too, if they would respond and receive Christ as their Savior, they would have the same blessings that he has in his life in Jesus Christ. We can have those blessings. And what are these blessings in these uh, throughout this year, I'm going to be touching on a number of them that's given to us in verses 4 through 14 and, and just help you to understand this is what we have in Christ. This is what Christ has provided for us. This is how he can help us through whatever we're facing in our lives on a daily basis and knowing one day it will all be over. We will be with him so blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ and given it to us now already, even though we're going to be there one day, the blessings of being rich in Christ. Let us draw upon those riches that we're going to be looking at throughout this year and understanding that, you know, wow. What we have in Christ is so much better. Even through the difficulties that we face and go on because we are living in a sinful world and Christ is coming to give us life and giving us more abundantly, maybe not material-wise, but spiritually-wise. Can we say that verse at the closing? Can we get it up on the screen for everybody? I <laughs> put him in a spot. Okay, there we go. All right, let's say the verse one more time. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Amen? Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for this verse. We thank you for how Paul wrote this and, and how he experienced your blessings in his life and was willing to bless you even through all the things that he went through. And Father, we know that we too, as we have Christ as our Savior and in our lives, that we too can bless you and praise you and thank you for whatever happens, whatever goes on in our lives on a daily basis because knowing that you are there for us and you will help us through it no matter what it might be. And we'll thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You've been listening to a free message from Hickory Corners Bible Church. You're welcome to pass this recording along to others, but please don't charge for it or alter it without written permission from Hickory Corners Bible Church. For more information about us, please visit us online at hickorycornersbible.org. There, you can connect with us as well as join in supporting this ministry. You can also follow us on Facebook and YouTube to see the latest messages from our teaching and preaching ministries. Again, our website is hickorycornersbible.org.